Hi there, I'm Jim Patterson, Two Rivers Paper Company, and I'm here in London at Jackson's, and uh, I'm going to answer a few questions about the paper we make. One of the characteristic and giveaway um, uh, features of handmade paper are, are the deckel edges. A handmade paper has deckel edges on all four sides, uh, which are very attractive when you mount the work forward. Much rougher, more irregular than than you would find on a machine made paper such as this. This has this is a machine mold paper, a very good paper I have to say, um, but machine made. It has two deckel edges. These are actually formed by uh, water jets, and whereas the deckel edge on a handmade paper is caused by the leakage between the mould and the decal that retains the pulp. And on the two shorter sides of a machine made paper, the decal edge is actually torn and you can see quite, quite a difference between, between the two. Um, personally, I like to stretch paper and you lose the decal edge anyway. Uh, but um, as a feature, that's one of the differences. It's also fair to say that, uh, that, that handmade papers are much more irregular in texture, as you can see from that, and uh, from this uh, mold made uh, printmaking paper, which has a satin finish um, and, and, and has a much more even, regular surface. Um, horses for courses. Is any one better than the other? Of course not. It's what you want to do with it. The two, the two fibres that we use to make Two Rivers watercolour paper are cotton and linen. Natural fibres, uh, linen uh, comes from the flax plant and is a much, much stronger uh, fibre than, than cotton. Cotton comes um, uh, from the cotton ball. There it is. Uh, the... Uh, the cotton is ginned, that's to say it's combed off the seed, just as I'm doing it, doing now. And as you get closer and closer to the seed, uh, the fibres become shorter and shorter and less strong, less suitable for making clothing, uh, but perfectly uh, usable for, uh, for making paper. Cotton lint, as the short fibres are called, and they come to us as sheet pulp. This is American. This is an American cotton. There it is. Um, beautifully cleaned up, all the seeds out. Fairly regular in length. Makes a bulky, long-lasting, beautiful, soft, soft in appearance uh, sheet. To beef that up and to strengthen it, we use linen. Uh, I haven't got any white linen with me. This is coloured linen and uh, if this is beaten up and the fibres added to the cotton uh, you'll get a nice textured colour and you can actually see the blue, the dark blue fibres in this. But whatever colour that the linen is it will add to the strength and rattle of the paper. They're shorter, tougher and definitely improve the, the workability of, of the final sheet. The cotton comes from America uh, or from Spain. I used to say it's processed there, but uh, where the stuff is grown, I haven't a clue. I'm sure American cotton's grown in America. Uh, the, the linen that we, we use, um, we find it very difficult to get a hold of white linen. Um, we don't like to bleach, so the white linen we buy as loom lengths of, 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 of linen cut up and add to our furnish and uh, we can get reasonable quantities of coloured linen like this um, which we're able to uh, to get from a small a small fashion house actually in Glastonbury who, who, who make pretty much exclusively woolen and linen um, garments. Sizing of paper that's to say, controlling its absorbency is the single most important characteristic of, of a watercolour paper. Paper, if it has no sizing in whatsoever, will absorb paint just like so. Just soaks it in, gone. 
that's 100% cotton, no chemical additives. We put in, as do other manufacturers of watercolour paper, an acid-free uh, size generally known as Al Aquapel, actually AKD. Uh, we put an excess of this in, so we put far, far more in than really you know, would be normal. Uh, and it makes the paper almost waterproof. So when you try and paint on it, it pushes the paint away and you get an uneven take up of the paint. Really, if you left it like that and didn't any do anything else, the paper would be unusable. We then coat paper like this in gelatin, animal gelatin, the vegetable gels really just don't do the same job. They toughen the surface, but they also make a receptive surface for the paint. You'll notice that uh, the sized paper is darker. That's the gelatin that's making it darker. But the paint on it will appear brighter because it sits on the surface. So here we are. We put paint on, on this one and it takes nice and evenly onto the sheet. You can see instantly you can see how much brighter the sized, the fully sized sheet is than the absorbent one. Uh, and if you put paint on top of that, uh, you get beautiful fizzing, I call it, where the two, where the two colours interact with each other. Uh, if you do the same thing on, a, on, a, 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 on a, an unsized piece of paper, it just crosses over and you get a dull black. So that's how we make our paper. And if you don't like what you've painted on it, it should be possible to take it back pretty much to white paper again, even when it's dried. And that's thalo blue, so that's a good staining, staining paint. If you try to do the same thing with an unsized sheet, uh, the surface simply breaks up, uh, as you can see there. The paint comes away with the gelatin size, and the gelatin size has strengthened the surface so it doesn't ball up, break up. The longevity of the paper, its permanence, mostly a function of the purity of the materials that they use to make it. Nature gives us cellulose, which is extremely pure and hard to break down, often in conjunction with lignin. So we use lignin-free cotton and linen, uh, which means that they'll last a very, very long time. People get very excited about paper being acid-free and indeed, our paper is acid-free and uh, made to an archival standard. Uh, we put uh, calcium carbonate in to buffer, the, buffer any acidity that might attack the paper or the medium uh, later. Uh, we, uh, we, and we use an, an alkaline type size.